Hello everyone, welcome to the preparation series from Easy Engineering Classes. In this preparation series, we bring to you previous year solved questions from Gate Computer Science, UGC Net Computer Science and Bank IT Officer exam. So starting with the first question, in this lecture, we'll be uh, taking up two questions from C Programming and both of them appeared in Gate 2015. So uh, starting with the first question, the question says that consider the following C function and you are given a function named fun1. So int fun1, int n and inside the function it is given to you int i, comma j, comma k, comma p, comma q equal to 0. Then there is a for loop i equal to 1, i less than n, i plus plus i then p equal to 0, then there is a second for loop which uses the variable j, j equal to n, j is greater than 1 and j is equal to j by n plus plus p, then the third for loop using the variable k, k equal to 1, k is less than p, k is equal to k into 2 plus plus q and the first for is returning q, okay. So you have to tell which one of the following most closely approximates the return value of the function fun1. Alright, so what is the return value of this function? Q is the return value and we have to find the value of Q. Alright, so it's not a very difficult question but let's see how the different for loops work. In the first for loop, the variable i ranges from 1 to and it is incremented by 1 each time in each iteration and is and it goes till n therefore it runs n times okay so this is simple it runs n times in this outer for loop p there is a variable p and an inner for loop the first inner for uses the variable j j starts from n and it goes till 1 or it goes till j is greater than 1 and each iteration decreases j by half okay so what happens initially j is n then j is decreased to n by 2 then n by 4 n by 8 and so on as long as j is greater than 1 so basically this loop would run how much times this would run log n times because you must remember that any loop or any variable in a loop the control variable if it is decremented or incremented by a multiple of say 2 see uh, if it is uh, multiplied by a particular constant in every iteration and either it is divided by a particular constant in every iteration it is updated by multiplying it with a constant or dividing it with a constant then in all those cases the number of times the loop runs is equal to log of n and the base of the logarithm is the constant by which you are multiplying okay so here in both these cases if you observe that the control variable or the loop variable j and k are being divided or it, they are being multiplied by a constant therefore both these loops would run log n times okay and by log n why i am saying n here because the range of j is from i to n or j varies from n to i and therefore the upper bound on the number of times n can be reduced from n and by dividing it by 2 that would be log n that means maximum log n base 2 number of times we can reduce the value of j okay it would go like n n by 2 j equal to n by 4 then j equal to n by 8 and so on okay and whenever this happens whenever a new iteration of the j loop starts the value of p would be incremented so if initially p was 0 how many times would p be incremented it would increment it by log n times therefore the value of p that would we would obtain after this loop ends would be 
log n base 2. All right. Now in the third for loop, again we have a variable k. k ranges from 1 to p. p is log n. So basically k ranges from 1 to log of n. All right. Also k is decremented, sorry, k is incremented by multiplying it with 2 at each iteration till it as long as it is less than p. Okay. Initially k is 1. As long as k is less than p, it is incremented by multiplying with 2. Okay. So here also the total number of times or the uh, what the value of q that would be obtained after the end of this for loop would be log of p. Why log of p? Because the range of k is from 1 to p. p is the upper bound where the multiplication of k by 2 would stop. You can say like that. Okay. And p p is log n. So what you can say that the value of q after the end of the third iteration would be log of p and p is equal to log n. So the value would be log of log n. All right. And the base is 2. Now since the outer loop, outer loop runs n times, the total actual value that would be achieved in q would be n into log of log n and why is it so because in one iteration of the outer for loop j will run log n times and value of p would become log n in the same the first iteration the value of q would be log p which is equal to log n okay log p which is equal to log of log n and if this outer for loop runs n times the value of q would be n into log of log n so the correct answer in this case is option d all right so the returned value would be the value of q that is present at the end of this complete fun fun one function okay now coming to the second question the question says, consider the following function with within C programming language and you are given the function foo with a character pointer a. Inside the function you are given if star of a and and star a not equal to space. Okay, so there is a single space here. Then if this condition is true, then foo is called with a plus 1 and put char star of a the output of the above function on the input a b c d space e f g h okay so we are initially given an array a character array that is represented by a small a and the contents of this array are a b c d then there is a blank and then we have e f g and h all right so the indexing is like this 4 5 6 7 and 8 and initially a is pointing here at the zeroth location of this array all right so first time when foo is called with this input or with the initial array what happens it is checked if star of a now what does that this mean star of a basically checks if the input array is not empty okay and the second condition is star of a is not equal to space star of a that means the content at which the array is pointing or the first initial position of the array is it equal to space if it is equal to space then this if condition becomes false Otherwise, if the content that is present at the address A is not equal to space and there exists some content at the address present in A, then we enter into the loop. And what happens when we enter into the loop? Again, this function is called with the incremented value of A. So now 
when initially a was pointing to the zeroth location it will now point to the first location okay so let's uh, number these addresses so that it becomes easier for you to calculate so if i give this address uh, initial address is 1000 this is i'm assuming the value of each integer as one okay you can assume it to be two or you can assume it to be four it does not matter i am assuming it to be one here okay so thousand and one this would be thousand and three sorry thousand and two thousand and three thousand and four thousand five and so on okay so this was the first call that was made at the initial address foo of thousand now a plus one the second call would be made at the next address that is thousand and one and the first character would be b okay so only this this portion the right portion starting from b c d and going till h would be passed in the second call all right now when we come to the second call we again check that the first character of the array that is passed exists yes the first character b exists and this is not equal to space so again we make a next call of foo in the next call what we do we again increment the value of the address and it now becomes 1002 all right at 1002 we basically pass the array which is starting at c in this iteration or you can in this recursive call we again check is the content that is present at 1002 not equal to space no it is not equal to space and it is it actually exists so we make another call and what do we do in this call we call foo of 1003 now again 1003 would return or would uh, result into another call of foo 1004 now when foo of 1004 comes this recursive call executes this if statement and it checks that is there something some valid character at the current starting address of a yes there is a blank character and the second condition now becomes false because the character that is present at the array starting is blank therefore we return we directly return from this recursive call because we don't enter into this for into this if statement and there is nothing apart from this if statement in this foo function so from here we return back we return back to the previous call which started at the alphabet d and we have completed this call okay so when we return back we have completed the call for 1004 and we now put care we print or we display the character that is present at the beginning so we display d here we display d and then we again return back because this function is finished so we return back in the call for 1002 we have executed this statement foo of 1003 and we display foo of 1002 started at the character c so we display c here so what is the order in which we are displaying we initially displayed d then we displayed c again continuing in this manner we would return back to 1001 and 1001 started at b so we would display b here and returning back to the final call we would display a here so the answer or the output of this question or this function would be d c b a so i hope you understood both these questions in these you have to think a little logically and without making any mistake you have to provide the answer that are asked that are uh, for the questions that are asked all right so if you understood both these questions please let us know by liking this video and sharing your feedback in the comment section below press the bell icon to next to the uh, channel of easy engineering classes for more such tutorials and notifications of the new videos that we upload in future so that you don't miss any video 
Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to our channel. Subscribe to our channel and good luck for your exams.